Today, we'll be looking at how to pull in some more cash with the contract ferry tourists safely to their destination and back. As this will be our second trip into orbit, we'll be looking at refining our ascent a little bit by taking advantage of some additional flight data that I've recently unlocked, making getting to orbit both easier and more efficient. We'll also look at dialing in our return to the surface so that we can reliably slash down into the ocean to the east of the KSC. Finally, as this contract won't be taking us any further than we've already gone, I'll be looking at modifying an older vehicle for the job, thus speeding up our build. Let's get started. As always, we'll start by taking a look at the contract. Here's the one I picked up, ferry two tourists safely to their destination and back. We click on that, we can go over the objectives in a little more detail, complete each tourist travel itinerary, then return them safely to Kerbin on schedule to collect their fares. Any passengers that are rendered unconscious due to G-forces will fail to pay for their itineraries. And so here we have two tourists. We have Trani's travel itinerary. Uh, we want to go suborbital and we want to go orbital. What's really nice is if you take her or him, I'm not sure from the name, into an orbit, in the process of doing that, be suborbital at some point and you'll end up doing both of these. And the same thing with Gilry's travel itinerary. And for completing that, you do get quite a lot of cash and quite a lot of reputation. That's the thing with these tourist contracts is that they tend to be kind of cash cows and reputation cows. So if you need to build up your cash, tourist contracts are a good way to go and they start to unlock the moment you start doing something the moment you go suborbital suddenly tourists want to go suborbital or if you go to the moon you'll start getting tourist contracts to do that and what makes that really great is that you can take pre-existing crafts and modify them and that's what we're going to be doing today and i just want to point out that there are multiple tourist contracts here uh i got here's ferry two tourists except these are just suborbitals uh, here's one that's a suborbital and an orbital and then a suborbital. I got one here for tourists, right? So I picked the one that worked for me, but if you want to go back and just keep doing more, they're going to be there for you. And you also might have noticed that there is a second contract I picked up, haul the Mark 16 parachute into flight above Kerbin. So the objective here is to have the Mark 16 parachute. That's the parachute we've had on all of our crafts thus far and uh, get it to an altitude between 3,000 and 11,000 kilometers, 11,000 meters, sorry. And while you're in this altitude range, you need to be at a speed between 10 meters per second and 210 meters per second. And just during our normal orbital ascent, we're going to be in this zone. So it's, and we're gonna have the Mark 16 parachute anyway. So it's gonna be one for free. So these are a type of contract called a part testing contract. And again, they tend to be cash cows. They give you quite a bit of cash for doing something that's pretty easy to do. And if I go back to the available, there are a few of these part testing contracts. Uh, the game likes to give them. Here's one to test a decoupler, splash down on Kerbin. Here's one to conduct, oh no, where's the another one? Here's one to test the RT Hammer solid fuel booster while orbiting Kerbin. So all of these require you to get the part into a certain situation and either activate the part or right click on the part and there'll be a button there to say test it. I have mixed feelings towards these part contracts. I tend to just pick them up when they're kind of for free like this. Other people like to pick up a whole bunch of them and then build a special craft to test as many of the things as you want at the same time. I'll leave that completely up to you. I'm not sure whether I want to make a dedicated video towards part contracts. Let me know in the comments or whether you would rather have videos on other things. I'm going to make a brief stop in research and development because there is a node. I have quite a lot of science, but I'm just going to unlock the nodes as I need them. Uh, a node that I want for this one is this general construction node, mostly for this Mark I crew cabin, which allows us to step up the crew capacity of our vehicle. So I'm going to grab that right now. 
So if you're gonna follow along, make sure you do have general construction. And we're also gonna upgrade a couple of buildings. And what I'm gonna be taking a look at is the launch pad. The launch pad is now a tier one launch pad, but for 50,000 curb bucks, I can make it a tier two launch pad. And the big thing that it does is it steps up the maximum weight of the vessel from 18 tons. You might recall our orbiter we built was just under that and it steps it up to 140 tons. It's a huge step. It'll it'll satisfy your rockets for quite some time. Uh, we're gonna be going over the 18 ton limit with this rocket, so make sure that is up to tier two. And the other one I wanna take a look at is the tracking station. And this isn't completely obvious. If I go to the upgrade thing, it tells me that patch conics become visible in the map. That really isn't an issue until you start going to other places like the moon or Minmus. And it also increases the power of our deep space network. Again, not really an issue while we're just hanging around in low orbit about Kerbin. But what it doesn't say here is that by upgrading, you actually start getting some more flight data. And I want to take advantage of some of that flight data for our orbit. So I'm going to pick that one up as well, tier two. And as I already mentioned, we're going to start by taking our existing craft and modifying it. So this is the rocket we've already taken to orbit in mission four. And what I want to do is modify it so it can carry tourists. Now, an important thing to understand with tourists is that they don't fly. If you took a tourist, Let's take Jebediah out and put Trainee in there. And trying to fly this thing on the launch, it gives you a mission saying this vessel has no remote control or man controlled modules. Do you want to launch anyway? You can say yes, which means you'll hit the space bar and then after that, it's on its own. You won't be able to do anything. Tourists are cargo. They don't do anything when it comes to terms of controlling the vehicle. Now, you have two ways in which to deal with that. Way one is to install a pro body. I do have one pro body unlock, the Probodyne State Putnik. If we temporarily put it on here, let's just remove the parachute temporarily, stick it on there. There it is right there. And they, they put what a pro body does is it allows mission control to control the vehicle. So this is really intended for uncrewed vessels, or you can use them to actually replace your pilots. In fact, you start to unlock better and better pro bodies, and don't be surprised if you find pro bodies that can outperform your pilots for you. But this pro body is not one of them. Although this will give me control of my vessel, what it doesn't do is give me the ability to use SAS. And SAS is really useful during our launch while we're flying our vehicle. Also, the Stiputnik, as you can see, is kind of big and awkward. I'd have to probably get some sort of service bay a payload compartment in there, tuck it in there. I'm gonna do something else instead. What we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this away. We're gonna use our pilot, and then we're gonna give this thing some extra cabin space. So we're gonna take off, actually while I'm at it, let's take off the science entirely. There's not gonna be any science that's done. We'll take off the decoupler, we're gonna take off the heat shield. We're gonna go down here to utility, and in here we will find the Mark I crew cabin. This is a crew cabin that can hold up to two Kerbals, and we're gonna split that right under there. It's kind of weird looking because really this is kind of a thing that's really meant for planes, but until we get ourselves a three person command pod, this is going to have to do. We're gonna take our heat shield, we're gonna put that back under there, and we're going to take our decoupler, we're gonna put it under there as well, and then we're gonna put the rest of our rocket back here. Now, we're going to need to make sure that this is still gonna work for us, so let's go over here, we're gonna take Trainee out of the pilot seat, we're gonna put in Valentina for our pilot. Valentina has a little less experience than Jebediah. Putting her in orbit will get her to be a level one pilot just like Jebediah. Now the thing to notice is, as you put in your crew, if you take a look at the Delta V number, right now for instance our Delta V is 2,394. Let's put in one of our tourists and it's gone down to 2,381. If I put in another tourist, it's gone down now to 2,367. It isn't significant, but you want to pay attention to that, especially with smaller vessels. The weight of the tourists count. So make sure that you load up your crew 
so that the delta V requirement and the thrust numbers that you get here are reflective of what is really going on. Okay, let's get into actually modifying this vehicle. Now, one thing that I do want to do is this single parachute probably is going to be okay. Emphasis on the word probably. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on, we have some radial parachutes and the smallest of these are these drogue parachutes that are designed to deploy higher in the atmosphere, though they do provide less drag. But if I put on two of them right here, they sit on here okay, and they will help out. Now, I, yeah, they've been in the right spot on the staging, so that's all pretty good. Okay, let's see though, we probably have modified some things. We've added on some weight here, so let's check to make sure everything is still okay. So taking a look at our orbiter here, don't forget to go over here to your Delta V and put this on vacuum because that's how this thing will be operating. It has a thrust to weight ratio of 1.51. That's still more than adequate, almost a thousand meters per second of Delta V. So the orbiter is absolutely fine. Let's move our way down the stack. So we're going to put on our core stage here. Take a look back at that statistics here. I'm noticing that the thrust to weight of the core stage has gone down to 1.77 probably be okay but getting it in around two is probably a little bit better so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove here these two I'm gonna replace this top tank with the FLT 200 the size down put that on like that uh, maybe I'm gonna flip this over so that the stripe matches more yeah I like that better <laughs> there we go what's the thrust to weight now on that 1.95 that is good okay uh, we should also make sure about stability put on the center of mass and the center of lift center of lift is still comfortably behind the center of mass so that is all still good we'll put on our SRBs again there we go okay and yeah this is all making sense let's take a look at the bottom now one thing to notice at the bottom is our Delta V is down to 3,372. That is not good enough. So we're going to need to get this again up around 4,000 makes it really easy for us to get into orbit. So I could add more of these Hammer SRBs, but I do have larger SRBs. I have the BACC Thumper SRB. Okay, and that's put our, our Delta V up to 4,078, more than adequate. More is still good. I have pushed my mass though up to over 26 tons. That's why we upped the level of our launch pad to account for the extra mass. And we'll clean up these boosters a little bit, put some aerodynamic nose cones on the top. Also slid them down on the decouplers. Remember having the decouplers push at the top of the boosters will aid in their separating cleanly from the rocket. And then we position them so they look a little bit better. And of course we got to take a look at stability. Don't forget about stability. If you're ever finding your rockets flipping out, this is the reason why the center of lift is just barely below the center of mass. I don't like that. So we're going to again fix this with some basic tail fins. And we have uh, our center of lift now comfortably behind our center of mass. Okay, let's take away the center of mass, center of lift. Now, if we take a look, I do have 28 of my 30 part limit. I could put on a couple of more parts. There are a couple of things that are tempting, but I did unlock a new part at the same node that I got this Mark I crew cabin. If I go up to structural, I have here the TT18-A launch stability enhancer. I can put two of them on here. What these are, these are launch clamps. They hold the rocket steady and hold it down while you are getting ready to launch. Now for simple rockets like this, you don't need the launch clamps, but I don't know, they look good. I like them and I'm gonna use them. So I'm also gonna hold shift while I select my rocket. That selects everything. And then I'm gonna scroll down with the mouse bar so that this thing will be just above the launch pad when we launch. There we go. Now, as far as the staging go, be careful, check your staging. It always puts these in a weird spot as far as I'm concerned. Actually, this isn't bad, this will work. It'll fire the boosters at the same time it fires off the launch clamps. Uh, that will work perfectly fine. I kind of prefer to put the boosters first and then a split second later release the launch clamps. It does take a moment for these boosters to get up to full thrust. Um, and then that way, it'll go up right away as soon as you release it. 
Oh, one last thing, thrust to weight ratios, I completely forgot. Let's put this on C level. The thrust to weight late ratio is 1.91. Again, that is too high. We will adjust that. And otherwise, this fella is ready to go. Now, remember our basic game plan. Our basic game plan is to get ourselves up to an altitude of over 70 kilometers. That is going to be space. And to build up speed towards the east, specifically about 2,280 meters per second in order to achieve our orbit. Now, this being our second orbit, we're going to do a couple of things to sort of refine our orbital techniques just a little bit. If I go down here and hit the maneuver mode, we've looked at this information before. We have apoapsis and periapsis. But below that, we have time to reach these two things. The numbers don't really, they're not very sensible right now, but these numbers actually turn out to be really useful. And we got those numbers because we upgraded the tracking station. And so I'm gonna talk about when we get, especially towards the top part of our ascent and get ready for our insertion, I'm gonna talk about how you can use these numbers to more precisely insert yourself into that orbit. But for now, I'm going to put it back onto the regular mode. And I'm going to go up here towards the top right. This button I have used, but I didn't really draw too much attention to it. There's a contracts button here, which is really, really handy. It gives you, if I click on it, it should stay there. There we go. These are our two contracts that we got. And as you meet criteria, the little check marks will come up beside the criteria, sort of remind you what's going on, especially here. We can click the close one, especially this one. Um, we want to really make sure that between 3 kilometers and 11 kilometers, we're in this speed range in order to satisfy the part contract that we have. I'm going to keep that pinned over there on the right as well. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to put on our SAS. We're going to throttle up and we're going to punch it. Now, last time with the SRBs, I went straight up until the SRBs ran out of fuel and then I discarded them and then I started pitching east. But with these bigger thumper SRBs, we're gonna be up really high by the time they run out. So instead I'm gonna do what I more typically type of do. I wait until my speed gets up to over 50 meters per second and then I start pitching towards the east at that point. Trying to knock it over about five degrees so that I can start into my gravity turn. Let's hit the space bar. And then again, release the launch clamps and we're off. So for now, again, straight up. Really not doing much of anything until our speed gets to about a little over 50 meters per second. And then I'm gonna push on the D key and start banging it towards the east. And it kinda wanna go, but not really. Yeah, it's not so bad. I'm also trying to keep my heading at 90 degrees the best I can. A few degrees off is not a big deal. Okay, that's actually pretty good. I'm gonna turn off SAS and sort of let that kind of follow. I'm gonna knock it up again a little bit because my heading I noticed was a little bit too far to the north. Oh, now I got pitched right up. That's pretty good. I'm not complaining. There we go. I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let that settle in. Again, the less control inputs you do, the less you're fiddling with steering, the better. I'm gonna let, okay, I'm gonna put on SAS just as we get ready to d get rid of our boosters here. So SAS comes on. There we go, we're now on and now SAS comes back off again. Just letting this ride on up. I'm gonna put on our maneuver node and I'm watching my apoapsis. Again, not really putting in much in terms of steering inputs, none at all actually. And I'm waiting for this to get to 80 kilometers at which point I'm going to cut the throttle. I could be pitched over more for a slightly more efficient ascent, but I don't really care that much because I know I have a lot of delta V. We'll talk about more and more as we keep progressing through this. Okay, and cut. Ideally, you want to get hitting 45 degrees of pitch when your altitude is at about 10 kilometers. That's what I find is a really nice, efficient ascent. But I also find that if I spend too much time fiddling with the steering, that that negatively affects the e efficiency of the ascent. So lean towards less fiddling and just live with the ascent that you get. With more practice, you get better at it. I'm going to put on my SAS now. We're going to put this on the horizon. 
and I'm watching this time to apoapsis. You remember the horizon is the white line between the brown and the blue part of the nav ball. And when this gets to about 30 seconds, I'm going to start throttling up. And as I'm flying, I'm actually looking really in this zone here. Okay, let's start throttling up. And we'll go up to full throttle, in fact. And I'm watching this time to apoapsis. I don't want it to get to zero. I kind of want to ride it with a number that's just a little bit before zero. So I'm kind of watching and I'm noticing it's slowing down. That's great. If you feel it's dropping too quickly, you can pitch up and you can actually start pushing it away from you. You can stall it. See, now it's stalled at 13 seconds. I can start pitching down a bit to get it ticking down again. You can also reduce your throttle if you find that the uh, numbers are getting... Oh, got to go on to the next stage. Okay, I'm noticing now it's 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 8 seconds. Again, I don't want to get it to zero. If it starts getting too close to zero, I'll just pitch up. And of course, while I'm doing all this, I'm also watching my periapsis. I want that to stay, you know, get above 70 kilometers as well. Noticing here, it's stalling at four, so I'm gonna pitch down. Very much control this time too. And if you find it starts to get away on you, you can just cut your throttle and wait till you catch back up to your apoapsis again. Okay, I'm pitching down now. I'm gonna reduce my throttle because we're coming close. Look at my periapsis and cut. How did I do? 83.2 by 82.5. Hey, I'm not going to complain about that. We also got our suborbital flight to Kerbin and orbital flight around Kerbin all kind of teched off. So uh, we have done that part of it as well. All we got to do now is get our tourists back down to the surface. Last time I did the get down to the surface part pretty quick. Again, to get down to the surface, all you got to do is point your vessel in the retrograde direction. That is the yellow icon with the little X on it and start removing some of this velocity so that your periapsis goes down into the atmosphere and you will get yourself back down to the surface. But let's talk a little bit about how we can get ourselves back down to the surface in a reliable way, somewhere close to where we would like to land. So I'm gonna go to map view here. Right here is the KSC. And right here is where I kind of want to land. I want to land somewhere in this ocean. That's what I'm going to be shooting for. So how do you accomplish that? Well, first tip I would give is always start your descent burn from the same location. Some people like to wait until they're just a little bit before the KSC and then they just burn a lot, but that takes a lot of fuel. I have a lot of fuel, but let's do it in a more efficient way. What I like to do is pick a point that's maybe about a third of an orbit ahead of where I want to come down. And what I find is a nice point is this peninsula right here. It's distinctly shaped just ahead of the big crater that's here. I wait until I am lined up with that, and that's where I do my descent burn. So let's time warp until we're over there. And now it would be a good idea if you want to practice this to push a quick save again, F5 quick saves. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go again to my retrograde vector. Actually, let's get ourselves a little bit more forward. And we're going to start to burn, but I'm going to watch my periapsis. And I'm going to shoot for a periapsis right now of about 35 kilometers. I'm gonna see what that does for me. So just a little bit of throttle. There's no reason to rush. And I'm gonna cut it around 35, okay? 35.5, that's close enough. I'm just guessing at this anyway because every craft is a little bit different in how it behaves when it's going through the atmosphere. So. My periapsis now is here, it's well into the atmosphere. This is definitely gonna slow me down and my hope is that I'm gonna land somewhere in here. If I do, great. I know with this vessel going to that location, putting my periapsis at about 35 kilometers works well for me. If I find that I go too long, then I need to bring my periapsis down further. If I find that I come short, especially if I land in these dangerous mountains that are right here, then I know that my periapsis was too low and I needed to bring it up. 
That's why I quick saved. I can just simply come right back and try again. So let's see how we do. One thing about this craft is it does come off of the retrograde vector, but it won't flip around. So don't worry about if it's off a little bit like this and going a little bit sideways. Um, it will survive it all just fine. I can see here, there's the KSC. I am coming a little bit short. In fact, I might end up kind of landing on a little bit of hilly area here. But remember, that's why I quick save. So I'm going to hold the F9 key. We'll just try this again. So 35 kilometers last time was too short. So this time we'll try 40. But we are coming right now over the KSC. So we are most certainly going to be landing in the water here. This seems to be working very, very well. And as Valentina and her cargo of tourists enter the final leg of their journey, I want to take this opportunity to welcome aboard my newest patron, Michael Hopkins. Thank you, Michael, for your support, as well as my ongoing thanks to all of my Patreon patrons and YouTube members who continue to support this channel on a regular basis. Let's briefly go over the main takeaways from this episode. The main thing was how to use the time to apoapsis to assist you during your ascent, especially during the final insertion phase. We also saw that we don't have to always build our vessels from scratch. Modifying builds that we know work will save us time. And finally, we looked at how to make our splashdown locations a little bit more consistent. And with that, I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. Join us next week when we will be setting our target for the moon. I hope to see you then.